Hi guys, so today I'm coming to you from a standard balcony cabin on board Coral Princess. Now in this video, I'm going to give you a full detailed tour of this room and then hopefully be able to give you some hints or some tips that you might want to think about if you're looking to book this, maybe you are looking to book this exact cabin on Coral or any other balcony cabin on any other princess ship and actually sometimes just on any other cruise ship. Now, in terms of Coral, before we get started now, she is very different to the princess ships that I've cruised on before, which is Regal and Discovery. Now, the primary reason for that is that she was half the size. She was also much older. So this ship was launched in 2002, which puts her, what, just over 20 years old now. Now, when you cruise the princess, there's a couple of different options that you can go for in terms of room type. So option number one, you could book an inside cabin, which essentially means that you'll find yourself on the inside of the ship with no window. Option number two is to go for an ocean view cabin, which that can come in two different forms. Number one is an obstructed ocean view, and number two is an unobstructed ocean view. Now, that essentially means that if you're in an obstructed ocean view, you might be looking out your window and you might see a ladder or a bit of equipment or a lifeboat, but you do still get the benefit of having daylight in your room. Now, they can be very hit or miss, the same with balconies, so always do your research to just check what's going to be outside that window or that balcony when you book it. If you then want to go up from Ocean View into the balcony category, you've again got two options, which is the obstructed balcony or the standard balcony, which is what I'm going to show you today. The standard has got a fully uninterrupted view of the ocean, and the obstructed balconies on this ship tend to look out with lifeboats below them or with life rafts or with some other form of equipment directly outside the balcony. Now, again, same as what I said with Ocean View, some obstructed balconies can actually have pretty good views and you can save quite a lot of money by booking the obstructed variant. Now, when you go beyond the balcony room and you're looking to get something a little bit more premium, then a lot of cruise lines will then put you into the full suite category. So MSC, for example, after their balcony, you would then enter what they call the Yacht Club, which essentially gives you all the suite benefits. But Princess have got a slightly different structure on the ship where you can upgrade to what's called a mini suite, which essentially means it's a much bigger, much better quality room, but it comes without all of those full suite benefits, which you can see a tour of two different types of that room actually from this ship on my channel. And finally, if you were to look for the top grade room on Coral or with Princess generally, then you would be looking to book a full service suite. Now, as I said today, we're on a standard balcony and that's exactly what I'm going to give you a walk around. Now, time-wise, this has worked out perfectly because we've got the sun going down directly outside the window. So I'm going to stop talking now so that we can get a little bit of that on, on the clip for you. But the only thing for me before I take you outside to start this tour is that if you enjoy this video, if you find it useful and if you'd like to see more, please think about subscribing to the channel and also remember to give this video a thumbs up after you've watched it as well. That would be brilliant. But look, for now, let me take you outside and show you around this standard balcony on the Coral Princess. Okay, so the cabin that we're going to have a look around today is A604, which puts you up on the Aloha deck or deck 12 of the ship. Now, when you first walk into the cabin, you'll see on the left hand side, you've got this sort of open, I would call it a walk-in wardrobe area. And then we move into the main cabin. So we'll come back and look at that shortly. Fairly standard layout here. You've got your two bedside tables with your lamps. You've then got a bit of storage on the right and a workstation on the left, which we'll go and look at in a second. But before we do that, if we just turn around here, you'll see that on the opposite wall from the bed, you've got a flat screen TV. Now, this is a relatively new addition, and prior to the ship being modernised, it used to be on the shelving on the right-hand side there, but I'll take you over and show you that in a sec. Now, above your workstation, you've got a mirror, so you could use that if you were doing your makeup, for example, before you went out. And on either side of the bed, you've got your bedside tables, which if we open and close them here, you should be able to see that they click shut, so that if you're at sea and the weather's less favourable, shall we say, <laughs> you're not going to be woken up by the drawers opening in the middle of the night. And that's exactly the same on the other side as well. So moving up to look at what's actually on the desk area, 
You've got your hairdryer just above, so in front of the mirror. You've then got your phone and a couple of plug points over there, so you can use this phone to call other rooms on the ship. You can also call ashore, although I maybe wouldn't recommend that because it's not the cheapest. And then on here is where you'll also find your Australian plug point and also your two USBs built into the desk there. Now moving to look at the other side, you can see the section at the top that's where I said earlier that there used to be a section for the TV. So the old style television used to be up there. So it's quite good that they've left it actually. It just gives you more storage. You've then got a shelf for a unit I guess. And then down below you've got a fridge. Now my bit of advice is always when you get on board, get that full of water. If I'm cruising from the UK, I always tend to take like soft drinks with me. Just so that I've got something in the room when I get on the ship. Now, moving back out of the bedroom area, you've got your air conditioning, which is one of those, do you want it hotter, do you want it colder? It was always on when I was in the room, but I didn't really have any issues with the noise at all. You've then got a full length mirror on the left hand side, and that brings us back into the open plan storage. So, on the right hand side, I mean, I'm fairly vocal usually in a cabin tour that I would love that section to have a little curtain just so that it gets rid of all my clothes. I don't really like looking at my clothes all week, but it's a perfectly good place to store everything, you know. You then go into the wardrobe and you've got your life jackets at the top, your safe that's free of charge or it's included, and then you've got all of your shelves that fall into line below that. So generally in this cabin, quite a lot of storage by the time you add up all the drawers and you look at all the hanging space, so absolutely no complaints from me there. Next up for us is to move into the bathroom. Now, a lot of the bathrooms on this ship, if you've seen my other cabin tours from on here, they're pretty similar. One word of warning that I always do issue though, is that all of your storage is open. So if you look here, you've got your three shelves there that yes, there's a bar, but there's not a door to get rid of things out of sight. You've also got this really useful storage underneath the sink. So if you do carry too much, you can store some down there. But yeah, it is worth noting that, that it is all open. Now, inside the shower cubicle, which features a shower curtain, which I'll not go into. I'll, I'll not get angry about the shower curtain, don't worry. Um, you've got your fixed shower head on the left hand side. And on the right, you've got the washing line that you can see here. So that's just useful that if you get back and you need to quickly wash something or you want to hang your towel up when you're out, you can do that there. And then you've got two hooks on the back of the door. Okay, now last thing for us to look at then is really what you pay the money for with a room like this, and it's the balcony. A lot of people, they book balconies and they don't actually think, you know, it might be quite overlooked, it might be private, and they can get a bit of a shock. So let me show you what this one is like here. As I said earlier, perfect timing. The sun was going down and the weather was absolutely beautiful when this was being filmed. So yeah, hopefully you get weather like this. Now, balcony, to be honest, pretty shallow, but more than doable. You will notice that the deck above sort of hangs over this room ever so slightly. So it would mean that you will be slightly more shaded than a lot of other rooms on this ship. Until the point when it gets to now or just before this point when the sun is sort of hanging over the horizon. But all in all, absolutely no issues. You can see it's really private from your neighbours. And there's no one sort of looking down or looking up into your balcony which I've seen as a problem before. But hey, that's it. That's a full room tour of a standard balcony cabin on board Coral Princess. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd think about subscribing to the channel. I tend to launch one or two new videos every week, so hopefully I can bring you loads more cruise content. And if you're considering a cruise on Coral, check out my vlog series, which is now live on the channel, and also check out my other cabin tours from the ship as well. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and catch up soon. Thanks. Bye.